Welcome to another web edition of Q's Countdown. We're previewing Syracuse lacrosse as they take on Albany in the Carrier Dome on Saturday alongside Jackson Agello and Emily Wood. I'm Christian and Guzman. Syracuse coming off a 19-6 win against Siena in their home opener. Guys, what did you see out of the Orange that made them so dominant against the Saints? Well, I mean, going into this game, they lost a couple players from last season, and you saw the attack really was successful in this game. 19 goals, that's their most since 2015. That's impressive for this Orange team, especially in the first game of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you score 19 goals, I don't care who you're playing, that's impressive. Also, I think that the attack needs to continue because they have the more senior leadership on the team. They need to take the pressure off that young defense. Yeah, Jordan Evans with eight points, Nick Mariano seven points, both career highs for both attackmen. Um, are they going to be the main focal point of the team this year? Is this is where... Is this where the Syracuse team is going to have the most success? Well, it's about time, it's Jordan Evans' it's time to take over, I should say. I mean, he's the coming into Syracuse, he's the number one overall recruit. He really needs to step up for this Orange team. Last year, you saw that that was Dylan Donahue's role. He had to take that step up after the departure of Kevin Rice, and you saw Jordan Evans was able to create shots. The key is, is he going to be able to do it against better competition in Albany? Absolutely. He really looked like a leader, the leader that we expected coming out of it from him in this last game. And you're right. Can he do it against better competition? We'll have to wait and see. However, I think that, you know, eight points stands for itself. That's what a leader does for this team, especially a team that lost so many players after the last season. And I think I speak for all of us when we say we're not expecting the defense to hold um, Albany to only six goals like they did Siena. And obviously that defense missing preseason All-ACC candidate in Nick Mellon. What does the Syracuse defense need to do in order to step it up against tougher competition in Albany? Well, I mean, it's Albany's first game of their season, so that they're not necessarily going to have their max continuity going for them. But the team looked good without Mellon. Obviously, I mean, he was slotted to replace uh, Brandon Mullins, who we all know is a very talented player, the shutdown player for this uh, defense. The key is, will they be able to communicate without him, without that shutdown guy on players like Connor Fields? Yeah, I think it's reasonable to say that it's unrealistic to expect them to hold them to only six or less goals against such better competition. However, just because they're young, just because they haven't played together, does not mean that they're not capable of getting it done. They can step up. If one of their guys, it just takes one to step up and be a leader, bring the group together, maybe they can uh, be the kind of defense that you would expect from more like juniors and seniors, upperclassmen. Yeah, one of the players, Scott Furman, taking over Brandon Mullins' his number, actually number 11. He transitioning from long stick midfielder to close defense. He might be one of the guys that is on Connor Fields, as you mentioned, Jackson, one of Albany's best players, preseason All-American. Two goals against Syracuse in the NCAA tournament last year. How is Syracuse going to stop him? Well, it's certainly going to be a challenge. He's definitely a talented player for this Albany team. They have quite a few offensively talented players on this team. And he's just going to be looking to add to his 161 career points in the Carrier Dome. That's quite a few. He's comfortable in this building, and he's going to be able to score in this building. The key is they're going to be able to stop the guys around him. He's ranked sixth in points per game last season in the entire NCAA. Right. I think absolutely 44 goals, 73 points last season. That's impressive. But I think what's most impressive about him is he's only 5'11 and 160 pounds. He does not do it by out-muscling other guys. He does it with his smarts. He's extremely good uh, lacrosse IQ. He's quick. He, he just finds a way to get it done. And that's not something you can say about every player. There's just a kind of will and intelligence that comes with that. You don't have to be the biggest guy out there. You just have to step up, want it the most, and get it done. And that is what he represents. Some guys just have that nose for the goal. Yeah, Jackson, as you say, Albany always has that scary attack. No Seth Oaks, though, no Lyle Thompson, no Miles Thompson for Albany. So it might be a little bit easier for Syracuse on Saturday. What's your key to the game for, for Saturday's game, Jackson? Well, my key to the game, we already mentioned him a little bit earlier in this show, is Jordan Evans. He's the real key for this team going forward. You saw he had a career high in points in his last game, and what he needs to do is be able to do that against the better teams in the country. Albany is 13th in the country. He needs to come out and show that he can be that mature leader as a senior, a former top-ranked recruit in the country. Can he perform against the better teams? Last year, he somewhat struggled in some of those games. He would look a little lost, a little tentative at times. What he needs to do is be able to attack against the best teams and look confident. Yeah, my key to the game is Ben Williams. We talked about that senior leadership, and he really has to step up and be a senior leader. He Last year, he won uh, 17 of 21 face-offs against Albany and they ended up winning 16 to 7 in their uh, opener. I think if he can repeat that, obviously it's always good if you give your offense more possessions, 
keep it away from the deep uh, from Albany's offense, take a little bit of pressure off that young defense, and I think that he will be a big factor if he can win those faceoffs. And yeah, we saw what happened last year against Duke when Ben Williams struggled against Kyle Rowe and Syracuse losing that game eventually in overtime. Don't think it will get into overtime on Saturday, but Emily, who's going to win between Syracuse and Albany? I'm going 15-12 Syracuse. I know Albany will be motivated after Syracuse knocked them out of the NCAA tournament. However, I just think the attack trio, Nate Solomon, Jordan Evans, Nick Mariano, I think they're just going to be too strong. They will help that young defense. And I do think, like we talked about before, that the defense is going to be able to do enough against the strong Albany team and specifically Connor Fields. I mean, with a talented player like Ben Williams being able to get the orange extra possessions, I'm going to go 14-10 Syracuse. I just think they'll have those extra possessions. And the offense is talented enough to just win the game on their own. They won't necessarily need the defensive stops. I think naturally those will come in the game at certain points. But I think the orange will be able to pull it out. But two good offenses, definitely going to be a high-scoring game. Definitely, probably a lot closer, like you guys predicted, than the Siena game. Well, that will do it from the Citrus TV studios. Be sure to check just be sure to check CitrusTV.com after the game on Saturday for a full game recap of Syracuse versus Albany. For Jackson Agello and Emily Wood, I'm Christian E. Guzman. Enjoy the game, Syracuse.